Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of our live streaming session on site. Um, I'm calling it, for the lack of a better name, building site at the moment, which is a bit of a pun and a bit cheesy. So very good. It's strange. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I was just showing everybody, Alex, before you joined, that there's this um, uh, about how you can call this site get token. And one of the things I did was stop it revealing when you do get token, revealing what the token is, because I figured people on Twitch would be able to copy that down in time, and then they'd have super user access to our server. And that yeah, would be... you need to have like a one-hour delay on your stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or I just like say that save the access token in a local file, and I don't display it, and then you know it won't be part of the live stream. So anyway, I made that change. Couldn't uh, you? Um... With get token, why doesn't it set an environment variable and then you don't need to run it? You can just have it as part of your script. Yeah, it, um, why does it set it? What it, when you run get token, it can't set an environment variable. Yeah, but you could have your script set the environment variable. Like do site get token, return the token, set that, or use that in the next thing to uh, to deploy. Because you only use it for one thing, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's only used by the site tool, and so yeah, there could be an environment variable that it, it could. I mean, you could you can always always do this. It just it stores it in a local area, which is kind of common on Linux that you, you store it in a, a cache. But you can't set an environment variable unless you were to run a you know source. Yeah, but you you already have your deploy script, right? There's some bash script you have. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, uh, yeah, but that always calls site. Uh, and site knows where its access token is, but yeah, that you, you yeah, that that you could do that with a, uh, yeah, but you're right because if you if you look at these deploy scripts, I mean, some of them call site 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 site, and they just it just loads the access token. Where where's the babashka, Malcolm? The babashka. List. Babashka. What's this if fi stuff? I've yeah, never seen that before. Uh, oh no! Well, that's a bash. Yeah, yeah I know. Right. I'm, I'm joking because why would you use bash nowadays? No, I know. I mean, like it, it's useful for some things. Just, just <laughs> I don't know. Maybe old habits die hard. Um, anyway, uh, stay on target. This was yeah. We're getting a token, and then I, I was showing everybody how curl. Um, I, I I'm I'm using this minus k mal. This creates a file called mal and um, show you what's inside it. Oh, there's my bearer token, which I, so I'm going to get another token. But that's kind of what it does, because that means that you can give that to curl. Um, so I've got to get a new one now. Right, I, yeah. Um, and then I can do things like, oh, I don't know, site, um, I think it's, there was a thing to say list roles, right, and I can do that, and it will just work as there's a super user and I don't have to put passwords and blah 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 so it's kind of it logs, it logs me in for now the whole security aspect of site needs to be kind of like reviewed around OAuth 2 and things like that and we can do that another day but um, for now uh, just focusing on getting I'd like to get in, back into the reframe app to try and create that table in in um, closure script that would be really fun because all we want to do is be able to create a um, a a nice Kanban board. Have you ever created a Kanban board, Alex? I've used a Kanban board. <laughs> I've never felt the need to create one, but um... well, we haven't. We we we, we borrowed a uh, some code off the internet, and it, you can do it in a you know in about fourteen lines of CSS. You can create a simple Kanban. Um, I just wonder if there's one in Tailwind. There must be. Uh, I uh, don't know about that because it would need JavaScript, right? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, to do the whole drag and drop thing, yeah, it would. But I don't. I think we can wait until uh, tomorrow to do the drag and drop thing because we've got Lou on the show. Well, we might have Lou on the show. I can ask him to join. I can channel him, see if he comes. But um, but otherwise, is he on holiday tomorrow? Oh, he might be. Well, I mean, yeah. Anyway, the drag and drop stuff—you almost never need to actually like do that yourself because if you just want Kanban, then 
I guarantee there's like a million examples on CodePen that you can just look at how they do it and then copy that. And there's other things like Dragly or there's a whole bunch of things that are... Yeah. I probably wouldn't use a library for it. Unless... Okay. Cool. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of these things, are really, these libraries are full of ancient historic things for old browsers that not particularly yeah uh, yeah i mean like it what i tend to do is if i want to do some ui interaction that's kind of special like you know dragging and dropping is then code pen has like a a search function and you might have to like flick for a few but you get a good eye for like what is terrible and what is good practice and you can always check it out yourself and um you know you're not you're not just blindly copying random things you sort of look at the code and go oh yeah that looks like it's using fairly modern things right um, okay well let's do that but let's let's stop chatting and start coding i'll uh get I'll, I'll show you this curl script here which gives us our card so i was, I was explaining to the audience uh, before you joined and before i started recording um that this uh query here this is the cards query and it has a get method and this is the open api format but you know Mm -hmm. um, and then, for example, if I wanted to get, you know, the subtitle out as well, some of these things have a subtitle, so I could do do that and maybe restrict it to subtitle. Um, and then I could put that API. Um, I think the API has to have a name, so we say put API. Um, I don't know why it needs a name. It probably doesn't need a name. But anyway, then now when I do this, uh, this same curl thing, I'm going to get only the cards that have a subtitle because I've changed the query, and that's kind of how it works. So, you put in stuff. Yeah. so we can make it more complex, um, but at the moment, I think this is enough. I think sort of this is what Jeremy wants to see. Just he wants to be able to see his site, you know, the, the IDs of the cards. I'm going to take that one out just because I think we've got more, more cards if we remove that restriction. I wonder how many cards we've got. There is a thing called J, JQ. I don't think I'm yeah. on that, but you know, it's pretty nice if you've got a JSON stream, you can ask things like how many entries is in it and things. But we are going to move swiftly on and create a root in our, I think our CFR closure script environment has warmed up. It has, and I'm going to go to localhost. So I'm running this locally, but the resources that I'm getting come from the server so sure. and that's okay because it means we can we don't have to completely keep we get that nice fig wheel interactive experience but then at the same time we don't have to worry about deploying our data we can just let, use the data that's there users and roles and things so anyway so this is what we had yesterday can't quite remember any of the urls that we do i think one was called card wasn't it we had cards, oh, and we had this one. That's in my, right. So what we want to do now, Alex, is create a, um, perhaps a route that that gives us a table of all of our cards. Yeah. Can we do that? Yeah, I mean, I would probably have like, I think the idiomatic way is to have slash cards, slash nothing like you have there. Oh yeah, right. right. Yeah. And slash card slash thumb ID is the uh, is the ID, but I, I mean I okay. Guess that doesn't no, no, sense. yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I noticed that when I was doing some web dev stuff that it does seem to be quite a strong convention to put a trailing slash. Uh, you don't have to have the trailing slash, but um, just slash cards is your list of cards, and then slash cards slash thumb ID. Oh, I see. Well, like a idea. general I think, um, Yeah. So you, yeah, the other the route you had before was like slash card slash card slash ID. Right. Which, um, but anyway, if you go to where the roots are defined, I guess we can start there. Yeah, yeah, we, that's right. Um, so let's go to the nav um, area there. So we'll go to, no, we'll go into the car um, and forgive me if I'm a bit slow today, Alex. Um, did you watch the game yesterday? Uh, no. No, okay. Did football happen? Football happened and football was coming home apparently. Uh, did we win? Yeah, we won. Wow. I, actually, I heard lots of loud shouting, so I was like, well, something has happened with the football. I'm impressed that you were able to ignore that you, you've got gone 24 hours without knowing that result. But anyway. <laughs> Does, yeah. well, can I do name cards? 
does that? Uh, you've got an HTML. I don't. I don't know why you have HTML. I don't know why. I don't need HTML. Do I? Um, also, yeah. So why is why is your card slash card? I'm sure your URL before was like slash card. Oh, well, that's card. because it's application context, guys. Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you need that that application context thing? That doesn't seem mm -hmm. like it's. I mean, it's just kind of confusing because you can't read the roots properly. Sure. Uh, that is. Sure. Well, we we can make a note. We can make a card to take it out. Uh, do you like do? You, but do you do you need it? Why is it there? It's there because the history behind that is that when you're coding locally, that when you deploy this, the it isn't going to be mounted at home.trucks.site. It might be mounted in slash apps slash something else. I don't really know how to how other people do this, so I I don't know what the the right mechanism 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 you, is. You don't you don't mount stuff at other routes like that. You use subdomains if you want to do something like that. Oh, well, I I have a subdomain home.jocks.site, and the yeah. idea here is that you yeah that was it, it's ordered in order to support multiple different apps. So when I develop them, I just develop them under slash. Otherwise, a real pain. Um, now that might not be it, but subdomains is also a difficult one because a lot of these routes it's more like these are little sub modules of a maybe I, larger app yeah it just seems like breaking like you're changing the url by doing that which is bad i i mean you you kind of want to have the same like whatever the domain is is may change from different deployments but yeah, the sure. thing after the you know the domain should always be the same across all of your yeah, I, I guess I could do that. I could decide what the where these things are going to be finally mounted, and and um, uh, you know that it yeah it, it could be, and then then the local version would you'd have to type in the full URL. Yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, or or you just decide that they're all going to be slash apps, and then whatever. Uh, but I think I think it should be consistent. I don't think you should have like environment variables defining where they are. The yeah, start of the route. No, no, I agree. We'll we'll, we'll change that. I'll, I'll, I mean, I I I will accept your suggestions, but we have to move on. You know, we have to do one thing on one commit. You know, we have to choose what we'll build a table and then we'll come back to it. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. So that's that's basically what you want. Um, I but well, I think in the browser you're going to want to go to slash card slash cards or whatever. Uh, yeah, slash. So it. Yes, you're right. So slash cards slash yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, don't put the don't put the slash there um, at the end. No. Yeah, that would do. Okay. Um, and then if you change the one above to be cards, uh, and then actually get rid of, so the one above can. Be oh, I see. Right. That. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So nest nest it inside your cards one. Oh, I see. Okay, so you want because it's like a, a sub root of. Oh, okay, okay, right. So we could have um, cards. Yeah. Not slash. Not slash. Okay. Just cards. Oh, just right. And then okay. you have slash card, and then you have an empty string. Yeah. Perfect. All right, and then that presumably. Yeah, oh, with a slash. Okay. Slash. With a slash. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Do we want to check that that still works, or we're we happy that it will? No, it will work I'm... because you're saying that now it will be a section. Yeah, I mean, what, I don't know what your application context is. But... No, it's just slash. Okay, right. Yeah, no, it is. So. Okay, cool. And then if you go to slash cards, you'll get no view probably. Uh, okay. Yeah, page not ready because yeah, that, yeah. because you've not got a render thing. So that's yeah. fine. If yeah. we go to views, then here's my page not ready, Alex. Here, this is the yeah. Um, so I guess we add another one. Uh, nav cards. Cards. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. All right. And then we can just change slate cards. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want the new one. Probably not. We probably don't want the new. Uh, well, it's only a little. Uh, well, you might want to. Often, you often when you see yeah. the thing. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, so now we go to slate, I guess, yeah. and we go to. Uh, we've got card there, so we want we want to have a um, 
and you want to pop them in here, card, yeah. and we'll, we'll put a little, um, should we just put a little div saying cards, you know, just so that we... Yeah. So yeah, that, that seems yeah, to work. There we go. Um, so now we'll want to subscribe to our cards, so if we do a let, and then cards, be card. uh, subscribe. So this is a reframe subscription. Sub cards. And we, so, okay, are we feeling that we, we... Don't, don't save that because it will break if you don't have that subscription defined. Oh gosh, all right, yes. Uh, I, I, you know, that's a difficult thing for me. I have nervous, I'm always saving from the days where you weren't ever sure whether... Yeah, uh, did you save? I'm... Uh, I think, I know, not yet, I didn't save. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, it definitely, it, it, it's fine. Like, you can save, it's just the screen will go white until you save it with, yeah. with it fixed. Um, so here we yeah. actually have to do a JS fetch at some point. No, so here we get out what will be put in the DB. Obviously, okay. we haven't put anything there yet. So instead of current cards, it will just be cards. Cards, right, yeah. Okay. Um, to be honest, like after this, we'll probably change that current card one to just get in this cards list with the ID that gets right. passed in, rather than doing it that way. Or, or we maybe not. Well, anyway, yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, do the cards first. Okay. Do I um, do? Uh, yeah, I, I want to save now. Do I? Yeah, you can save it. You can save now. Um, okay. And then we need an event. This is why I don't like reframe, by the way, because it's like so much boilerplate all the time, and a lot of the time it's not necessary. Yeah. Well. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it, it does keep you sort of in check when you have bigger apps, and it stops things getting crazy, and uh, like it's a it's a relatively same pattern to follow, but I think there are better ways. Uh, yeah. But anyway, yeah, it's it's fine. It's not like it's bad. Um, well, here we are. Here's, here's a. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I would call it fetch cards. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fetch cards. Um, okay. Whatever you're. Um, we're going to get the DB here. Um, yeah. I know this. Um, and we're going to return a thing with the DB. Um, but here we're going to do the. Um, well, in fact, we we've got to initiate the fetch, and then when the fetch returns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't. You you might want to have the DB there to like set um, a loading flag. Um, gotcha. Right, right. Like I I often will have like a wrapper for doing HTTP stuff. So instead of returning like a map from this, you just return HTTP get or put or whatever. Yeah. And that function returns a map with the DB adding like a loading state to the DB. And then uh, does the FX for the um, you know C or JS Ajax? Yeah, we've got a similar thing going on here with this mark optimistic, where we make things um, optimistic and then dispatch the you know the the HTTP methods, and then when the methods what, come back. What's your uh, put entity do? What does uh, put entity does a, a JS fetch, but then oh, you're actually using JS fetch. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I mean that's probably not going to be uh, you, you probably want um, something like CLJS Ajax or like the, there's a reframe one it just makes it a lot easier because um, dealing with promises and stuff gets a bit hairy and uh, yeah you know I, thought, I, f I found it JS fetch pretty good actually I mean it's it, I, I, can, I know it's a new thing but it's it's been pretty solid and yeah I mean I, the library I, that I'm suggesting uses JS fetch eventually, right. but it's just like quite low level. And when you want to do other stuff like change headers and things, it's uh, the way you've done it there with the CLJ to JS is like a bit slow. And um, I mean, you don't need the nested CLJ to JS either. Uh, uh, what way? I don't need. Like, like there's just there's just a lot of code there that you you don't have to do if you have um, the reframe one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I'll look into that. Um, so, yeah, I'll send you. Yeah. Um, so, the uh, fetch cards. Um, so, you, we, we, when are we going to be calling fetch cards? At the, at, 
when we visit this page. Possibly. So you need an event called fetch cards, and that's just going to dispatch um, get entity or I don't know whatever your whatever your existing thing for doing a get request. Oh, you yeah. don't have. You no, don't we have don't have it. I mean, we do have. A th so this is what what happens when we set the current card. We dispatch a get card. This is saying get card. So it really is so yeah. to be to be yeah. completely cons you know synap consistent with what we already have. It's it's get cards. Yeah, and it goes off and does a. Um, I I really would <laughs> use the proper way of doing it. This isn't like a a reframe sanction thing to have oh, these side effects in. Okay, sure. So what was the? I, I sent I sent it on Slack. I think. Okay, let's have a look at this. So basically, it gives you a um, an FX that you can return in that map. So instead of you know DB and FX, it gives you an HTTP XHR IO um, thing. Right. So if you scroll scroll down a bit, then you can see. Um, yeah. So you just return uh, in your map. XT, HTTP thing, and then you do method, get, URI, whatever, um, and you can... You can oh, I need the maps. Okay, okay. Well, let's just... Okay. Well, before we... Um, okay, so before we create that method, should we go and integrate this into the... You know, rather than having different different styles, because we only have one fetch, I think, in this O2. We only have two fetches, a put entity. Uh, one for the put and one for the get. So we yeah. move this over. So let's just, um, is there anything that we can do to just just commit what we've currently got? You can, stash, you can stash what you have, do the commit to change fetch to this and then unstash okay. and okay. carry on. Uh, then, uh, let's... Um, Yeah, let's just stash all this stuff and just have a quick nose. All right. Okay, so so cards table. Okay, so that's stashed in there. All right. Yeah. And now we are going to go back to steps for Eden, and we're going to be bringing. Uh, this guy? Yeah. And put in the, the item. Don't tidy up this while I've made that change. Well, well not, not at this point, not in this commit. Okay, so we've got that inside. Run the, I'll just kill my current environment and then run shadow again. Were you, uh, were you tempted to use Helix? Because they're well, using that ship for sales. <laughs> if you're using Reframe, it's there. Yeah, no, I was playing with it. I, I was playing with some small component in yeah. React, but then I got in a bit of a bind because I didn't really understand, well, you know, didn't how, how hooks mixes with Reframe because they're different models. So Yeah, you, you shouldn't use Reframe if you use Helix. There's a different thing that you use if you're going to use Helix. Right, yeah. Um, but it, seeing as you already have reagent stuff and reframe, it's really difficult to change. Like you'd be rewriting a lot of things. So I think just don't use it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The the main benefit of Helix anyway is is performance. I'd right. Say. Okay. So let's go to uh, just I guess go to that slate card again. See if it. Okay. I think. It, we should stop doing that because we've got this new one, haven't we? Card. Here we are. Or oh, do we call it cards? Well, it's card, but we're going to call it cards. Yeah, we haven't got the cards, but yet we're doing the fetch. Okay. Uh, so, good stuff. We do the fetch. Uh, so, up here, we will change. Uh, you might have to talk me through this, Alex. Um, but let's just. 
apply the instructions. We will add that. I'll pop that there. Okay, and then we have uh, when we do a get card. You also want to add the Ajax one that's in that second example. Uh, okay, all right, all right, cool. Uh, just because that gives you the response format functions. Cool, all right. Um, and then. And then find where you have fetch. Well, it is it is here. This is the this is the the get, and then what this is doing. So you're saying I'm going to return a. Um, I'm going to have the. I'm not returning a change to the DB. So. Technically. Yeah, I mean, I. Oh, I okay. probably. So I probably would like have um, a wrapper for your gets and puts and stuff. So if you add the DB in there, because. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to need that at some point. Right. Yeah, and then if you just return, no, no, don't return that. No, no. So if you return the result of a function, right. um, that you're going to call, uh, you know, get request or something. Okay. And then it takes a map. Okay. Uh, so and it will have you know method get uh, actually no it won't need that it will have URI it get is implicit yeah okay URI ID yeah and then um, on success and then receive card you can components. I I would probably have like because oh yeah you do you do already have that one okay that's fine and then um, on ah, failure that, that has that needs to be passed the uh, the you know the body yeah it will be it will be okay cool cool All so right. that's that's what this on success handler does it will like insert the response into that um, into that receive okay. cards component so our event handler for receive card card components might need to be tweaked just no um, yeah I don't know if it will we'll have a look at it. I think it does the same thing. We need to have a get uh, request when we here. Yeah, and you'll also need um, an on failure, which you can have like a generic failure event. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 so have like generic HTTP failure um, or something. Yeah, which which will just you know uh, console dot log the the response. Sure. Right. Okay. Yeah. Are we good? Uh, what's this response format? That, is that necessary? So yeah, so your wrapper thing, your get request here, is going to return a map. No, 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 no. Oh right, the wrapper thing, this one. Yeah. Yeah. So it will take um, it will take a map, and then it will return a map. With the um, HTTP. Yeah, actually, you'll want to get request will also take the DB, so it will take okay. the DB and then the, that map. Um. And it will return the DB, but this. And it will return the DB, associate in the DB, um, let's say loading question mark true. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, no. Uh, yes, yes, sorry, yes. Loading true, and then uh, it will do HTTP XHRIO. Okay. And method get. And then you'll want to like merge, merge this with your M, so that you can override the default. And then the other defaults you'll need is like timeout and response format, and that's it. Okay. Oh, right. no, in in that in that method uh, map. Oh, wait, merging. Uh, mm. If you look at the example on the right. Yeah, I am. Oh, I think I'm doing. Oh, I see what you mean. So no, I, I understand. Oh, okay, gotcha. Right there. So these are the sort of defaults, and yeah, the reason I'm getting this format. get request is to so I don't have to keep on having to specify yeah. this all the time. Okay, and so this this failure might as well go in there as well, no? Because yeah, it's sure, a, yeah, default. I can override any of these. Go. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, and right. uh, you'll also need a response format. Uh, and I don't need a response format. Right, response format. And we by default we probably want this JSON response. Yeah. Response format. And keywords true. Keywords true. Um, question mark. 
Yeah, let me think about that. Yeah. I'm not sure if we want to be Red's tree, but I'm, yeah, I owe a question mark. I can't remember what we did last time, but yeah. Uh, it just makes it better to deal with it, right? Otherwise, you have to deal with string keys. Yeah. Yeah, there's cases where we want string keys and the cases where we don't. But Are there cases where you want string keys? I can't recall. But anyway, let, moving on. We have the get request here. Uh, and oh can we we can put in the uh, no so you can just delete all of that now um do, will it, will it, oh yeah if, if you have some headers that are important then you can add that too yeah so the the uh credentials include the js fetch credentials include is important so yeah will that get put in buttons? yeah okay yeah you can do headers no it's not a header um, uh, uh, whatever the whatever the if I go to MVM JS, JS fetch, uh, I'll, I'll do a search. It has a one of the things that you can. Get. It's with it's called with credentials true. Okay. In in this, I just looked it up. Okay, cool. So with credentials true like that. Yeah. Cool. All right. This is looking good. All right, let's just get out of this rabbit hole. What do we have to do? Um, we get rid of all this stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, actually. Oh, your URL is wrong, yeah. Your URL is wrong, but that's okay. Um, Other than that, looks fine. Okay, I'll just come to out, which is my... You need to you need to uh, get rid of that map at the end, too. Oh, uh, get rid of the map at the end. All right, of course. Let's stop it. All right. Okay, that should then do exactly what we've got. Yeah, there. it might. If you do are relying on the keys being strings, then it might break I it. I don't think I am. I don't think I am. But we'll see. No, it seems to work, Alex. Um, and I can. It seems to. Yeah, that seems to work. Okay, let's just sort of. Uh, yeah. It, it saves you a lot of time when you start doing more of these requests because the fetch stuff can uh, yeah, adds up and then you're doing side effects in your event handlers and all sorts yeah, of things. Yeah, no, that's nice. No, that, that's that's good. Well, that was very useful. So I'll, I'll get rid of it. Now I've uh, got that. So that, that before we can commit, though, Alex, we need to go and do this. There's another fetch. Another fetch. I'm sort of thinking, well, this is similar to... It's not the real one. Well, yeah, there is another fetch here. So let's go and keep uh, on the left hand side we'll see the uh, this right down here it says put entity so it's kind of the same deal isn't it you, yeah I mean maybe if your if your um, request like if your headers and your credentials and stuff are all the same regardless of the method then it might just be better to have your function be you know HTTP requests and then you don't default the method yeah, uh, you're right. Well, I, I don't mind defaulting the method, but I do often use different methods. So let's call it HTTP yeah. request, um, and then let's let's then call HTTP request up here. We don't need. Guess, this you just have to remember to override the method for non-gets. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm quite happy to remember to do that. Uh, so this would be uh, keys db. We need, we need to get the db up there. Um, and I need to say method, and this is going to be a put. Um, but uh, I do want this headers now, Alex. So do I do it this way around? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, why Why do you want the headers? Because I've got to say that I'm putting a content type of app. Yeah, so that's that's a different thing. So you want request format, right? No. Uh, no, this is... This isn't saying. I'm pretty sure you want request format, like response format sets the. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm pretty I, sure you want. I got you right. So request it's, format. It's a, it's a thing that they have called request format, which will do the headers. For okay, you. cool, cool. Okay. Um, is it this? Is this? Do you have a, an example of that? Oh yeah. Um, Here, request. Ajax JSON request. Format. Oh, just format. Okay, just format, not request format. Okay, uh, so let's put that in. Well, it, yeah, I don't want to do it on. I don't want to do that on a. a get yeah, I mean, this is this is why it's kind of nice to have get request and then put request and 
like your your functions, uh, and maybe they can maybe you can like death the default ones that are shared between them or something. Well, like, yeah. Yeah. So you could say this is the thing where we could say, well, that's yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 like that, but we're gonna slush into that. Yeah. yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure that's how I did it before. Okay. And then we've got a put request, uh, but by default, uh, we're going to SOS format. Yeah, but it's not really. It, it's more a case of. If you haven't specified it, if you, well, I, I can see, I can, you know, I can see an argument for saying, well, okay, if the method hasn't specified it, you know, an alternative, then the default is that we're expecting you to want to do a JSON request form, um, and also we're going to pop in the. Method here, do you think? And then we'll just make it a kind of. Um, if you're using merge, why don't you just put method put in in that map? Could do. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we we, we could do. Uh, so technically, that would mean that now somebody could go and override the method of put request, which is okay. But it is different semantics. But we'll go with that. Right. So what are we doing here? We're merging that. And then to be consistent, let's do the same up here, but without a format. Yeah. That kind of thing. I mean, you're already defaulting to get, so I guess. Oh, you know, I don't really need that. All right. Yeah. Got it. Right, right. right. You, I either do that or change oh, well, the this default. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let's put that up there. Right. Um, and let's stop faffing and start crawling these lovely functions. So just down here we we better do the get request there. And then we'll do a similar thing down here. We'll do a put request. So we won't need that one. We won't need that one. We're getting our credentials for free. Uh, we do we need a body? How do we specify the body? Yeah, so the body uh, is I think it's body. Uh, oh no, it's params. Yeah, on the on the right there, params, and then um, params, and then it's the, just the data, which would just yeah. be um, uh, okay. Okay, it should just be the. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that it's the entity. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like you were getting rid of the keyword. <laughs> in well, I was getting rid of. The, I was turning the. Uh, bec well, I was turning it to JSON essentially. I mean, it, it, you know. It, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. I, this, this is the nice thing about not having to use JS fetch is you don't have to worry about all the conversion. So if I have a just to, to be clear, if I have a a keyword of that, I'm expecting it to turn into. Um, like that. Yeah, I guess so. I'm not. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't turn it into this, but if it does, I'll have to go and... I, don't, I don't think so. Um, well, we've got, we've but... got to look at the uh, JS console, can't we? The, 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 you, you yeah. Look at the uh, sure. Yeah. The network. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you just want your your URI. Uh, oh yes, we need that URI. Good thinking. And also the success and failure. Uh, the URI is just the ID in this case, and then the on success and failure. On success in this case was a um, mark save succeeded. Yes, you're right. Uh, it's uh, down there. Well, good, good job I, uh, but I don't need the. Do I, I don't need. I can't yeah, get the ID. Do the failure. Do the failure because you can override it. If you already have written one, then uh, makes I just it will. It will Right, okay, let's try that. Okay. Yeah, should work. Right. Let's uh, let's just check that it does work. Um, yeah, so we'll... Here we go. That seems to work. Well, you know, let's let's make a make a change. A B C. Now, if this has truly worked, I should be able to go back here, load up the page, and it should have it should give me my. Um, Oh. oh, something's broken. Let's go and see what has broken. So when I do that, I can go and have a look at see what it see what this. Well, I tell you what I can do. Um, click, click the 
two like click the get request and see what the result was. Yeah. The JSON one. That's the page. Uh oh yeah yeah uh this one. That one. And then response. The response uh is all looks sort. Of, oh no, it has got the um, it's lost its it, it's lo lost its um. Let me let me show you if I redeploy this particular car. Um, uh, let, me, oh, let me just sh sh if I go into this and I deploy, I'll show you what it should look like before we make any changes. Oh, I was wondering why it took so long. Okay, so now when we refresh this, you'll see what it should look like. So what's happening, Alex? Is I, oh, hang on. Didn't you just deploy? Oh, I didn't deploy the uh, seeds. The deploy the seeds. Um, it's all right. It's all out high and potent. At least it should be. So here we are. Yeah. So uh, let's go back here. Have a look and see uh, what the. Yeah, this is what it should. So I, my suspicion is that it is. Um, taking away the um, well, there some of them had namespaces though. It wasn't taking away all of the namespaces. Uh, one of them did, but that's only because uh, it isn't set by the um, so what's oh it, it, the reason yeah that that there was one thing there that was. In a namespace, and it was because when we when we go and do our put, which is essentially you're doing this put card, uh, it has a um, it has a schema of card. We go down here, and card d does uh, it does do some uh, Well, okay, let's see, just see what happened there. So we went and made a change. To the document change and it saved it and then when we go back and look at a get um, this is so um, is that right? mm, it sort of disappeared you've got an error in the console yeah yeah it's all gone a bit Crazy. If I go back here, well, let, let, let's just uh, let's just go and have a look at that card in our um, in our record. So we know that the, the card here is going to be the ID. I think it's the home .site cards card section. Actually, if we, we can just find it by typing. Cards, and it will be one of these ones. So this one. So I'll show you what that looks like. That looks like that at the moment. Okay, and it will. Okay, so my my theory that is, we. This should work, and then when we make a slight change. Right now, let's have a look and see what it looks like. Um, no. I wasn't expecting that. I guess you can check the put request in the network tab. Yeah, that's true. Put request. Yeah, it does seem like we've lost the. Uh, yeah, it's it's lost it from the put request though, not. Yeah. The... Oh, I see. So if we look at this para one, if we've changed para one, so if I go and show para one. Ah, right. This is the this is the deal, right? It, you can see that it's. Yeah. yeah. Is there a reason that you're using JSON if you want to use namespace keywords? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I think either you need some like intermittent uh, like interceptor that does all your keyword changing, or you don't use namespace keywords, or you use transit and not JSON. Yeah. And those are your your options. Um, so, yeah, so you can have 
You can have an interceptor with this reframe thing that says every time you do this HTTP, XH, whatever, um, you go through and you change all the keywords into something that can be transported over JSON or, or whatever. Or you use transit, or you yeah, <laughs> don't use namespace keywords. So I think transit is out because we don't want the product to look like an Eden product. Sure. Or, you know, so um, you, you have namespace keywords, so it already does. Well, yeah. Well, yes, but there's JSON. This JSON is particularly agnostic about namespaces. There are. It's up kind of up to you. We need something to distinguish between. Like namespaces are very important in the design of this. That, that certainly for cards, because this idea of merging or really preserving, um, pr preserving. Yeah, so, so maybe this is because that um, you're not passing like the keywords true or whatever. Um, yeah, well, you know, when you do a JSON, um, when you do a JSONista, um, JSONista does preserve or at least it will it will it behaves a certain way when it when it sees a namespace keyword right which is Tommy Riemann's kind of scheme is that he will turn that into a.b.c I believe Cheshire does the same thing though I, I, I'm not certain so it does get rid of the first colon but it does sort of preserve what you've got and then when you read it back with Jason Ister, it turns back into this now the reason that's important is because namespaces are important in sight because there are there are special namespaces which have things like what the HTTP tag and last modify time and things that you don't want to clumsily crash onto by um, corrupt somebody's document. You know the, the namespaces are useful to keeping certain things separate from each other, and um, you know so that's the kind of the reason for the current design that. Mostly, it's just JSON. So a, a non-namespace keyword is really what you, you know mostly use. But um, we, in when things arrive in Crux, we want they are turned to Eden, and we we don't want to um, kill all the namespaces because then we're going to have a we, we're going to have um, namespace conflicts. That's that's the sort of long story of why we haven't been able to get away from namespaces and um, you know we could have gone just straight Eden and um, just yeah it needs a bit more thought um, and there are certainly things you could do with JSON schema to say you know and, and we and that's what we do we sort of say that well this thing is actually a you know has some semantics that we need to turn into a date so there's uh, the, the, there are ones that were quite sophisticated mappings between one name and another name and, and uh, so JSON schema is where you can put this extra metadata but that's all a big long kind of journey to sort of explore that part of the design um, so for now can we do a change to it seems so it seems like uh, there was a recent commit like they introduced this bug in the CLGS Ajax thing which didn't allow qualified keywords, and then they fixed it 29 days ago. Oh. So I'm assuming what's happened is the reframe thing hasn't updated their dependencies. Oh, all oh, right. Well, should we try that then? Um, so what what is the version that does work? So the latest one, which I don't know if they've released it. No, they haven't. So you'll need to like get the Git hash because it hasn't actually been released. Cool. Yet. Well, let, let's give that a go, uh, just as it's if it works that will that will be yeah good. so if you go to the cljs ajax repo um, i guess this one or use it yeah and then just find the latest commit uh yeah um they keep uh it's to the far right, 334. Right, uh, and I'll find this one. Okay. Yeah. And I think I'll just have to. Remind. You already have um, COJ Ajax there, so you can just uncomment it and then. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. I'll put it, pop it down here. Right. Oops. 
okay. And then this is going to be a uh, git slash char or something. Yeah. Git, git slash char. Uh, um, I've got a I've got a version of this. I think. And some of those things that you. Oh yeah, we go. Git URL, and then just char on its own. So right. The yeah. URL in this case is this guy. Uh, not, not him, it's this, presumably, and the shard is going to be this. Pretty sure that's right. Yeah, I think so. You get rid of the Maven version. Yeah, you get rid of the Maven version. Or we might just comment that just so that we are... You need an end bracket. You've... But we do need an end bracket. Oh, uh, I think it's... I would, yeah, I mean, I don't see a reason to comment the old okay. Maven version. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh well, okay. No, we've done our worst on that file. Okay. Um, and then, do you want to like exclude CLG Ajax from the HTTPFX thing? Um, because that that's what was bringing it in before. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's do that one. So let's call exclusions like that. Yeah. Okay. That okay. I guess we're doing. Oh, hang on. Uh, no, I think it's okay. No, it's not okay. Manifest height. Um, yeah, that sounds like a one to Google. <laughs> I've seen this before. Let's see what it's tried to do. So, um, it means the Git repository does not contain a depths.eden file. And therefore, tools.deps can't find it. Right. So we went into uh, we went into Git. Uh, no, it's, it's um, this. No, it's because it's because CLJS Ajax, I guess, uses Linegun or something. It's there. Oh, I see. Yes, doesn't have depth. So I can't. Yes, exactly. Uh, so I can't do that. Um, okay. Um, is there any way of a other alternative for hacking it? Yeah, I have no idea. Um, I mean, I, mean, I guess you could fork it. <laughs> no, I mean, does it allow you to... So what are we doing here? We are doing a request format. Is it in... What I mean, I mean we, could see, we could see what their code change is. It might be possible to... Uh, key in code. This what I'm like getting at is that don't, don't we use request format? Um, like where's the request for like this isn't the, the problem in here when we actually yeah yeah that's why I'm saying like if you override that with a fixed version right we, like we could we could create our own one you know yeah um, and, and put it in this namespace because presumably that's what it allows you to do so the bug is only isolated to that and therefore we need to have a look at that um, but isn't there a way of specifying your uh, would there be a way of providing your own body or I guess not. Hang on, I'm just looking at how they do it. So, uh. here we are. There is a body here, the exact data to send with the request, and we could, we could, um, yeah, yeah, that sounds okay. that sounds good. So for that, it's only for the put request. So we could say body, keep the format, but yeah, I mean just delete the format because it wouldn't be used, right? It's yeah, it does say actually when you oh, use right. it, uh, then request params and request format are ignored. So that's that's fine. So it's it's really something that you would put on put here. You would say body here. And that has a. Um, I mean, I could I could bring this one back. Let's see it. 
And I wonder, you know, this is the exact data. This kind of this is working before, and this will kind of work again. But we can put a little comment saying this is only while we're waiting. Uh, yeah, sure. For the latest Ajax uh, to be released with a fix for string mm -hmm. i string five namespace keys. Okay. You know, part of this show is to sort of like warts and all coding. I mean, this stuff happens all the time, right? I mean, well, not all the time, but you know, it does happen, and you need to just sort of sometimes put in these little stents into your code. This is uh, this is one of the many spices that using closure adds to your your programming meal. Well, I would argue it's less likely. I mean, it's there's so many languages and a way. You know, like we were we were poring over that Selma issue on Monday, weren't we? And it was just like because of that equality check, which was just a bit crazy. So I, you know, anyway. yeah. I mean, yeah. Every language has its spices. This is just a closure specific one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, web development is also, I would say, full of this stuff. Uh, right now. Oh yeah. Closure does a good job of hiding a lot of the JavaScript spices from you, at least. Yeah, but some do slip through, and then, then they're very nasty. I had an interesting one where I was like doing, uh, you know, if user or something like that, or or it was if um, some var, and that var, uh, if that existed, then I wanted to do something else. You know, if it's nil, then do something else. Right. And it was breaking in a weird circumstance and I figured out it's because sometimes it was zero and even though zero exists and is a valid thing an enclosure would be considered truthy in JavaScript zero is falsy so it uh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. that one tripped me up no JavaScript zero is truthy no no zero is falsy in JavaScript if you do zero if zero in it, would it will return the false thing okay right so I'm just looking at this. Uh, we want, we don't want that exclusion anymore. We just, this is what we want, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Okay, got it. Um, and so, um, and yeah, I, I don't want that thing anymore. And uh, okay, I think we're we're still good. We're still good. Okay, let me re raffle in. We we'll try and give this a go. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, let's go back to this. Uh, that was probably still the bad data one. So let's deploy our seeds again. Probably lost our. We're going to lose our. Um... No. Okay, that works. We'll have a look at the network tab. I'm just going to pop that front up a little bit there. Um, pop that down there. Right. So what we're expecting now with this new one is that when we do a change to here, oh, we're getting er errors here. Um, yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting to see what the body looks like. Uh, yeah. I think I, I think the reason it's saying a four one five. I I know what a four one five is. It's a sort of unacceptable media type because I'm a kind of HTTP. Uh, yeah, but see what the I guess request is. Yeah, so that's the. Oh, uh, right. so I guess if you have body, then it thinks it's form data. I no, I think we just haven't got the yeah the the request uh, headers just doesn't have a content type. It, yeah, it's just got the wrong content type. We just need to change that and we're done. So let's go back to this. So it's good to see that that is actually working. And it, I've never ever seen this border go red, Alex. So I'm quite pleased. I, I didn't even know. Oh, is that, is, does that mean there's an error? Yeah. 
Yeah. I got really confused by this because this is the same styling that the React developer tools do when they're showing you like component updates. Well, you know, great developers think alike. I guess. Maybe not. Um, yeah, I mean, this was just really, uh, I mean, all of this UI and UX, Alex, is just, uh, do you know, remember that project you did where you had a load of dev hints, you know, you had, had it run in dev mode and you could see that, you know, you, you were using it to view the app state underneath the forms and things like that. So it's, yeah. it's a bit like that. This is, this has not had any design, you thought, think about it, we're just trying to play around um, yeah, sure. a bit like you. And, and, and often, you know, Playing around is faster than using wireframes sometimes. Um, yeah, I think I agree. Depends on what you're doing, but yeah, I mean, I I like your point the other day, which is that actually I don't need wireframes because I, you know, I'm fast enough as a developer to play around with things, and you you all really want to touch and feel things to see. It. It's not very easy to visualize something if you only have the visual. Yeah, you, you can I, I mean, something. I mean, you're right. Like sometimes. It is quicker to do wireframes if you have some really custom interaction that yeah. you don't want to spend ages getting it to work. But then you can just like put a GIF in your app, right? I mean, it's or a GIF. Well, no, because that doesn't. That's not a thing. No, no, I think, I think, I think it is. I said, <laughs> no, I think I think. but I think you meant to say GIF anyway. On that, well, it's, it's not giraffe. It's giraffe, right? So. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, any pedantic listeners can write in with angry emails. Now, let's go to how do we set a content type? Let's let's get this working. Uh, I think it's because you're you got rid of the format. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think now that you're returning, no, no. Uh, uh, so in your put request. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we didn't put format back in there because. No, 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 so not, not, not there in like the default. Oh, right, right, right. Um, right. Because now, now that you're like giving it a JSON string. Yeah, right. I don't know if it will work. Well, but... yeah, it did did say in the documentation that it was going to be ignored, but it was put in. Because I think what you might want to do is get rid of like where you're doing all of that um, JSON stringify thing. Yeah. Get rid of the JSON stringify, but keep or, or uh, but do... You just do your down here. Um, yeah. Do, so just have just do this thing. Just the keyword function, basically. You're just mapping that over the keys. Yeah. And then you're returning, you know, a map, but with these string keys. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, yeah. Because I think this will return like a JSON string, and then that won't. So you mean you could make that? This could be parent. We'll try that. So we could say. Let the format. I don't. Know, is it request format or format? No, so, so I think this should probably be in the um, in the put request wrapper. Yeah. So params, you just put entity. Yeah. And then in the put request wrapper, it takes the entity. It does some keywords changing to it, and then that's what it does in the HTTP request. Uh, so if you just do entity there, get rid of that format thing underneath, and then you go up to your function. You put request, okay, like here, yeah. right. And then if you do a let, like at the top, um, just to, I mean, this is a bit hacky, but I guess it's just until the... Yeah, the well, like, we want to go and change all of the left hand. So, feedback. yeah, let data, and then you'll do some, like, map keys. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying. Well, yeah, we, we can do that. Yeah, map key. I don't have map keys, but we could do a reduced KV. Um, sure. uh, I think medley should be like a, a requirement. Uh, for okay, uh, so we've got um, this would be a, uh, what are we doing for? Yeah, the, the this thing. I'm going to stringify the key. Right. Wait, 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 I mean. No, this will work. Okay. No, so yeah. I, I mean, you know, at this point, we just we don't care. We want to just get it. Going. Yeah, but you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Sure. So I think that I mean that will won't that will only do a shallow thing. But uh, and then you're saying this would be params. Uh, so I don't don't we want to reduce over 
the params of the is that the idea the, of the yeah coming in and when we, yeah. then we can say data so like params or like yeah. params right modify params or something yeah that's that looks right okay we'll give that a go well it is giving us two hundreds. Yeah, we haven't done a put yet. We haven't done a put yet. Okay. Well, let's just try to make sure it just comes out of the wash. Yeah, it does. I'm going to do a little. I'm going to wrapple in here. Uh, let's say wrapple. Let's just see. Uh, oh, happy days! I've got that um, RL wrap. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to put in a little change to that. Oh, it's gone green. So something happened, but we didn't check the check the console. Yeah, it's uncall or oh, unrecognized request format. Oh, it's format, not request format. Oh, is it? Yeah. Up here. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least we put it. Yeah, that's kind of confusing. It is confusing. Okay. Here we are. Um. Uh, network tab. Network tab. 204, that's what you want. Uh, if you look at, well, I changed the first power, so. Uh, damn. Yep, yeah, looks right. Looks right. No, it doesn't. It's got. No, no, the keywords are gone. Right. Uh, is that because it's nested somewhere? Like if you look at the body of the. Oh, oh uh, what does. In your, in your network tab, look at what it's sent. Mm. Uh, in the request. Oh right, uh, com classification content. That's right, uh, content. The the con. But that is top level, right? So it's not actually doing it. Um. um. Oh, it's uh, because your reducing is wrong. Your reducing is wrong. Uh, You're associating like new keys onto it. Wait, well, is that right? I I no, I've got I've got enough. I've got a no map there, and I'm getting a, a a KV on each each of these params, and I'm so I is it is um is params what you're calling that key when you pass it in? in oh right, yeah, yeah. No, Let's have a look. Uh, request. Uh, params is just the ent the entity. Yeah. Can you can you um def that entity in put request? Yeah. Does that work? Like uh, above the let, do a new line. Yeah. And then just do def params, and then params out of map. Yeah. yeah. And then save that and change something in the form yeah. and then we can like at least make sure that it's looking right yeah how do i do so it? if you if you run that um just evaluate that reduce kv yeah oh, okay over and yeah i mean i think you could have left okay okay yeah sure uh, yeah i know it hasn't worked let's look, look at the yeah. entity owner oh hang on but hang on owner in this case has already been is this because before we changed it and it's updated a db and now it's broken yeah it might be we might have to re redo our seeds that might be it oh uh, that's open. so yeah my ter my passwords are actually in my right there we are okay yeah that might be it we might have actually fixed it Okay, what does that put like look like? Um, nope, still wrong. That's. Uh, I mean, like if you just do your seeds and then don't do anything, I guess we. Can no, hang on. That's that, well. That's correct. If you look at para. No, para is changed. So, what's going on here? What? Oh, I see. Now we can. You mean have a look at that? This this is correct now. Yeah. This is correct. Yeah. So now right. so now look at the reduce. Right. 
the reduced looks right. Yeah, so then that does look correct. Da, 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 da. And then okay, so in the network tab, it's still in the sending it wrong. Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing what's happening is it's taking those string keys and then putting it into a keyword and then breaking the keyword. Uh, <laughs> that's what you're yeah, happening, yeah. Right? So should we go back to our, like, here's the body? And we can put the content type header in, presumably. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that, like, okay, we know what the body is going to be. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, the body is grams. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a noble attempt, but we can do, we can sort of do this on the params anyway. We, we can sort of do, do all this. Uh, yeah, do you need to stringify? I don't think you need to stringify the body. Maybe I don't in this case because. I think you can just have body be the params and then just change the header to. Change the header. Oh, okay. I, uh, what did I we see. do before? Did we say the body was the params? Did we say yeah. did that worked? I'm not sure it did. No, because it sends it as form data, so you need to change the... Oh, is that the only reason it failed? Yeah. So if we can put the headers in like this. this is just... Yeah, try that. Just see what happens. Mm. Okay, um, let's recede. Network tab. We got an error there. The request payload is looking correct. But it's doing it at 400. Uh, bad request. Um, that looks classification content. Yeah, that looks okay. Do you get any useful errors in the response? Yeah, you, you know, we don't get, we get, head, no. but, but what we do have is a thing called a, we have a request ID that is available to us. And we can spy in here and we can see everything about the request. So yeah, I mean, we do need a better error browser, but this is okay. Better than error has occurred anyway. Um, so let me hand this down. This will be in um, just check. Bad JSON, I saw. Oh yeah, right, my bad JSON in input. So why is it bad JSON? Uh, let's just no. the I was going to say, just look at the headers. Oh, I know why it is. It's because, yeah, okay. You knew, you do need that JSON stringify thing then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's because it doesn't have the commas in it. Okay. Just so, just do J, uh, JSON stringify and then, um, Still yeah, like that, but without the keyword. I don't. Or, 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 or yeah, uh, get rid of the reduce thing and then just use your keyword. Just use the original keyword, which is kind of what we're doing there. But I can, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just delete that whole let. Right. You can just. You, oh, yeah, okay. I don't oh, need to you could just. Yeah, but you could just test another one, right? You could just change another thing and then. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, oh, that 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 went okay. So yeah, I, that's yeah, that seems to be be all right. If I have a look at the um, the para again, yeah, that's that's looking better. Because uh, yeah. I'll put my I'll put Alex in there and then just check that it says Alex in the para. Yeah, it does. There you are. So yeah, well, that is some horrendous code, but well, uh, <laughs> a bit wonky. Well, we haven't got our table yet. So we're, yep. But we're getting close, so we shall, uh, do we have that little, I think it's a good idea now to commit this because we yeah, are. Yeah, commit, 
commit that. Uh, we now have actually made some progress. So um, uh, I think we can get rid of him. Yeah. Uh, but this we, this comment really pertains to this uh, nasty junk here. But this. Um, Uh, uh, I would say usually we just use a Ajax request format, isn't it? Um, yeah, JSON request uh, format. With, you know, with params as the uh, entity. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's good. I think we'll we'll do be good, and we will. Do that. Okay, and we say uh, migrate from or switch really, uh, switch from JS fetch to uh, uh, well, it's really the reframe bit of it. Yeah, HTTP FX. Uh, I'm reframe HTTP. Yeah. Uh, wait, I'm going to this as uh, this makes. Uh, well, no, I just basically leave it. Yeah, and then pop. Point people at the Twitch episode, maybe. They want to go. Um, all right. So, so now it should be easy to add your table. Well, easy to fetch your cards, at least. Great. So now we've made that work, we're going to be able to go slash cards. And we've yeah. got our um, paper. So you need the, your event. You need to write your event. That's true. Just let's remind ourselves we've got slash cut uh, in our roof in our event. We didn't put. Oh, I know because we haven't. Uh, you haven't popped your stash. Pop my stash. Okay. Off we go. Right, popping the stash, and now we should have cards. I think we had something that said, "Oh, I've got some card." Uh, cards without training slash. Okay. There's our cards. Now we've got a table. Events. Events. And do your get cards at the bottom, I think. Um, I, I think we. Oh, we didn't make it. We didn't make it in the end. Okay, yeah, so I guess copy get card, change. Do you get the card. Not on that? Yes, I can. Thank you so much. You're welcome. One second. Uh, I love you. I love you too, Tara. Can I draw something on your whiteboard? You, you can. Yes, you can come in and draw a picture. <laughs> oh my god. Lou was the imposter. He was tweeting me. Okay. Um, while Tara's drawing me a picture, should we copy and paste this? Are you still there, Alex? Yep. Okay. Uh, get cards is now going to be uh, slash cards. I think that was it. That was our open API. Doesn't need an a ID, right? It's uh, just uh, no. slash cards. It's just just cards with the slash at the end. That's the um, doesn't need the ID. Yeah, I was just checking that. And then you can get rid of the ID from the parameters of that function too. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then we're going to say change your cards. Yes. Oh no, yeah. it's yeah. received cards. Yeah. Um, so well, that's going to take you and show me how. What? You can copy and that's paste. That's crewmate. That's imposter. That's a dead body. Thank you. Okay. All right. See you again. See you guys See you soon. So, so actually, something I just realised is you don't need that like that JS to CLJ JSON keyword size keys thing anymore. This thing? No, 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 below in your received cards component. Okay. Uh, because the reframe HTTP thing will do, we'll that, do that anyway. So that will do, that will be enough? Yeah. yeah. Do we want to test that? Yeah, probably. Okay. So let's go to our cards. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that worked. Uh, 
our test is can we refresh? You see, we learn loads of amazing. Tests. I was about to say automated tests, but then I'm just lying. Yeah. Um, so instead of calling that JSON because it's a lie, you can call it response or data or whatever. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, card. Right. Uh, card. Oh, right. Card. Card. Okay. And so we're going to be doing something similar. We should have in get yeah. cards. We should be saying received. Uh, receive card. cards, and this should be cards. Yeah. And then we can say uh, we don't we don't really care about components because it's a technical thing. But we yeah, I mean, I think you just put I I think you just associate DB cards cards right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Cards, cards. Do we want to? Um, oh. oh. I was going to say, do we want to create an index of it? I said, no, not now. We just want a list of it and get, get it back as it is. So, oh, hang on. Yeah. I think if you if you want to do an index, you would do that in a subscription anyway. Exactly. Right. Happy to do that. Or, you know, it's a different thing. Okay. So now we should just in our cards component. Come yeah. Forward. Yeah. So okay. now, if we go to our view, view. yeah, we've done the subscription, haven't we? That's right. Yeah, we've done the subscription. We've got cards and the view, and now, uh, oh, we've got slate cards. Um, and yep. And then, if you if you were to pretty print that card thing, um, I usually have like a pre, yeah. That's I don't. Thing. Yes, I would love to know how to do that. Uh, let me let me paste you a, a useful helper thing for that. Oh, we got a nail there. How are we getting nail there? Oh, um, was, because I firstly haven't done any partial thing. But no, but also you're not firing that event. You need to go oh, to the root, and you need to add an FX for that root. Right, that's in the navigation. Oh, I see. As so I need to do it here. Oh gosh, right. Oh, okay. Get uh, cards. Get cards. Wonderful. All right, and then we will be able to see. Oh no, it thinks uh, it's actually. Hmm. Uh, it's not that URL, but it, we were very close. It's card cards because these APIs are hosted at different points in the tree. There we are. That's a two hundred. Um, there we go. So that's given us all of our cards. These are all the cards in our universe. Actually, why no? There should be more than four. Um, well, maybe could we um, when we did our get? Shall I get my token again? Save it. Um, we we'll just tease the tease the um, my credentials in. I e let me tick all the API service again. I just want to see what we. I think it was card cards slash. That gives us a total of. Um, I don't. Yeah, it could. It really could be. About four cards. Actually. Thinking about it, I don't know what was the. Uh, no, actually, I think we had more than that. But I'm going to have a look at the API. Did we? Hmm. Could we put the? Could we deploy it back properly? I wish I had JQ on this machine. It's not hard to install it. Oh, I I know what it was actually. It's it's this um, uh, because this change where I uh, tag. I was explaining this to the viewers, but the, the I've made a recent change that so every put and post of a, a Crux entity that goes through site is tagged with the, the request, which means you can basically ask things like, show me the things I've created as in you know, my user, or show me things Jeremy's created uh, without you, you know, it's an implicit relationship, right? So, and because that has only just gone in recently, it will only, you know, some many of the old cards will have not got that change. I would just deploy and run that. Oh, I've got an internal error there. Uh, probably because 
of a uh, of a problem in that um, that query. Oh yes, can you see this query? If you get your query wrong, I mean it will it will tell you in the error report. But, uh, Where? Well, it will be in there. I mean, yeah, there there, there is a question about. This I think you, you need a playground, right, to write these queries, and then you copy and paste them into your open API. Well, that's true. That's true. I mean, the thing is, the query only gets validated. Cru poor Crux can only validate the query when you run it, because yeah. I'm sorry. So, I mean, th th there would be all sorts of things that we could do. But do you remember my demo at uh, JuxConf that went bad because it was just, again, something that could be validated. I didn't validate, and therefore... You know, you can valid, um, um, the demo went wrong because I had the whole open API, but I, the, the stuff I was writing in the open API wasn't proper open API. So, it, it, you know, if, if it had gone through the open API validation, so, so it would have told me, oh, can't put that thing. Can, can you not return, instead of internal error, can you not return the error string? That's much more, I think. Uh, can I not return the... Error. Like instead of just seeing internal error, can you get a more useful re response? Oh yeah, you can. You definitely can. But I um, uh, well, yeah. The the original, the current rationale is that when we have a developer user, and your subject is a is a developer, then you'll get the stack trace. Uh, Yardi did this thing where it just gave you the stack trace come what may. Yeah, but it's, it's security issues around. Security people, was, uh, we've, we've found with PCI, the PCI audit people didn't like stack traces. But you don't, you shouldn't return a stack trace, you should return a string, which is like, you know, query, there's a problem with the query, but it, it's, you can oh, yeah, well, from the stack trace and then return that. I was thinking just internal error and you can click it and then if you, if you have access to that, uh, you know, uh, right. then you get the whole... You, you 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 might not you, you might be a support user and not get the whole you might get some redacted information in there as well. Yeah. So I, yeah. it sounds like it would yeah it sounds like it you want a as readable as possible string and then if you can click through if you're you know a developer or something yeah. to get a full stack trace then even better but like the bare minimum should just be a string that tells you as much as you should can be readable. Yeah. It, it, it's a balance between strict security and strict diagnostic. Cause, yeah, because like the it's a similar thing in Hasura where you generate these GraphQL queries and they're just strings yeah. um, in your code. Right. So you can't, like, there's no validation done on it because it's just a, a raw string. Yeah. And then if you run the query and there's an error, like, because you formatted something wrong, you got a wrong bracket. If there's an error in the query, right. And then you... Yeah, you just get a string back that says... Uh, you know, it's it's probably from the server, and it just says you know query passing error, and then it gives you the details. Right. Um, but it's not like a full stack trace or anything. No. But it it's enough to help you know that there's a problem with your query, and then you go, oh, let me look and check my query. Yeah, I I, I mean I I, I uh, w yeah would like to have a session with you where we kind of think, hmm, what is the right thing to do? And 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 partly I was thinking of the uh, you know, the, these this is. This was easy to do because this was just what Selma can, has a feature where you can take a big Eden blob and turn it into HTML. But I feel that sure, but there, mu know. there must be a, a string in that thing, right? That is useful. Oh yeah, there is. If you know where it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. But as as in, does that does that change all the time? No, I mean you could you could. What I'm saying is is that you could have a a whole application of something that reads this and gives you a really beautifully formatted report, um, which sure. points you directly to the error and makes it very easy. I mean, it's just this is not easy to navigate, but it is easy for me to say, well, give me all the data because I'm not quite sure which I don't want to filter it at this point because I don't know where the clues are. Um, right. Okay. It does need yeah. to be. So it helps me as a, as building site to see the dump of everything because sometimes I spot things that aren't quite right elsewhere but I think from a error console um, you know I was e I'd even heard a name for it Alex called it insight which is a, a brilliant yeah um, yeah 
I, I mean, I think, yeah, you, you just need like a, a case statement on the type of thing error and then a get in to, to that map to get where the error is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Exactly. Uh, and that is all part of building side. So that's if, the future episode. But it's um, if you if you look in your Slack, I've sent you um, a nice formatting thing, which is useful for like when you've got this exact situation. If okay. you, uh, you use that P print oh, code, oh, that's all right. I can just oh. Uh, you'll need to require um, P print. So. Okay, so let's have a look at that view because we are getting towards the six o'clock mark. So we'll, uh, so I've got this one. You're saying I should need a uh, what do I want here? Oh, oh, okay. oh, is it? Oh, what's the P print? Oh, I see, right. Okay. Oh, so it's part of. So I put that in there. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll not worry about the utility thing just yet, but. Uh, oh, I put it in the wrong place anyway. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll put it there. We'll take it out. Put that there. Put that thing. We'll go back here. We'll put screen. We'll go there. We'll and then what do you do? P print. And then you just do, yeah, P print code. Uh, you, you said P print code, got it. Right. Yeah, instead of the pre. Instead of the pre, right, like that. Yeah. And square brackets, square brackets. Oh, square brackets. What? Uh, um, cards. Card. Yeah. And oh, okay, square brackets. cool. All right. So, oh, wait, it works without the square brackets? Well, we've got cards. Yeah, of course, it always works. So now we just need to write a table. I think even yep. now what is the I guess there's a whole um Whoa, not an actual table. No. No no as in like don't use don't use table elements. That's uh That's a no no, is it? What that's a no no. Just just put it in a list for now. Oh just put so it in just, okay. just do um a, a UL and then a four. And then for card and cards, um you might want to like uh, structure. Oh, why didn't that work? Well, I guess it, no, it didn't. No, it did work. It did. So I can, I can. What do I, I want to do? Structure now, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you want to like for some reason there's a card in your card, but okay, I guess that makes sense. So you want to. Uh, I oh, don't, well, um, no, it does make sense. It does make just sense. Just do um, a let in this four. Um, so I, I wouldn't do the key thing because it's too nested. Yeah, okay. So uh, or, 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 I see what you mean. So for card in card. But actually, actually, yeah. Do do keys card because you there's only one. There's only there's one. Only one in right. it. Keys. That is the card. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. And then, and then do... Um, we'll do another... Uh, we can yeah, a let and then do the bracket yeah. and content ID yeah. and title. Uh, yeah, we, we can do this. We can get the content. Uh, you can do no, no, no. So if you do if you do the destructuring thing, yeah, then you can do uh, jux dot. Oh yeah, oh you you are doing that. Yeah, I have done that. I mean, the, the crux one is a little bit. Um, I think you can actually do this if you if you if you really. This this will give you the ideas where I get cheeky. Uh, yeah, um, but you need the brackets, right? You need the curly brackets. Where? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I would say that uh, is the structuring of card. Yeah. Right, and then let's just print the. Uh, let's, so so now we want to say like let's say like title. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's give it a little bit of a. We give it a bit of structure. We say div, div title, div subtitle, the content, or ID. Oh, they give it, give it the ID. You want to see the ID? Yeah. Um. By the way, you don't, you don't have um pointless divs like that. If you want to wrap two things, then you do colon less than greater than. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Right. Uh. Yeah. Uh, called a partial, isn't it? Yeah. Um. A fragment. A fragment. All right. Yeah. Oh, and this didn't work. That was me. This misleading everybody uh, that that you can do this. Yeah. Uh, you can do um, you can you can do crux dot db keys like that. Yeah, there it is. So that would Ooh. that would kind of work. And then I think 
another day we'll we'll make it so you can click on these things and it will be the you know so there's this whole yeah, I mean question easily mark. done yeah. with a, an A and then an href but yeah. yeah yeah well if the thing is you wouldn't want to be going to home dot jocks dot site I mean you can sure. but you you'd want like a, a yeah I mean I guess I guess a rewrite function that uh, does your links yeah like a, a link function that takes a a link that m strips out the the domain part if it exists and then adds a new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, okay, well that's. I don't know if Jeremy's going to get too excited with that output, but, but we are on the path. That's really good. Yeah, it's, it should be easy to style though because you can look in the HTML and you say, um, like I I would call uh, instead of that fragment in cards in the cards function, mm. I would have like you know a div dot cards right so where you've got um the top level thing there right here and then you yeah. yeah no no not there the above that instead of that fragment okay yeah yeah like that um div dot cards yeah and then when you do your styles you can say you can say you know dot cards and then a ul in that and then a, an li in that and you can style the whole thing to look like a table right and and uh are we talking grid layout here? When you talk about tables, not using table elements, how do you get the grid-like layout? Is it because you use grid layout? Totally depends on what you want it to look like, really. Like if I, I mean, want it to look like a table, like the... If you, if you want it to be a table, you should use a library. You shouldn't try and write a table yourself. Um, right, oh, I see what you mean, like a, a, an AG grid or a... Um, yeah, I mean, not AG grid, something lighter weight, I mean, I have oh, there's one. some uh, React uh, awesome grid things, aren't there? There are some things. Yeah, I mean, you could use a React one. It depends how many features you want. Right. Like, I have a I have a Reagent one um, that we could plug in, um, but honestly, like, the React ones are more stable. Okay. <laughs> so, right. uh, well, well, let's let's do that next time or another t next time you can join us. Yes. We'll make but that's, the, the but that's it's not like a. a Super quick thing to do usually because um, yeah there's difficulties sometimes. But anyway, we can have that be next episode. Yeah, I think we've done enough today. That has been great. So we've done some really good. So as a recap, we got using the reframed A HTTP FX. So we yep. moved away from JS Fetch and that. And I think partly doing that, we were able to explore a little bit about you know even debugging exercises is. So educational, at least for me, and uh, you know, you, you get to sort of see what state of maturity site is at from a sort of how, how it kind of behaves. And we had that conversation about the, the namespaces of the keywords and some of the design decisions that are sort of ongoing um, and conversations. But the yeah, the main thing is that that it worked, and we were able to get a list of cards, which was, was really good. I've just realized you don't need that fragment. You can remove that because you can return multiple divs within it. Oh, uh, which one? In that li and line, the last line of Yeah. Oh, oh, I see, right. We don't, don't need that. Remove that thing. I think there's something uh, else that we thought we could get rid it, of as well. It? It's, you only need that uh, fragment thing when it's the thing you're returning from a function because obviously a function Sure, right, yeah, exactly. Other oh, other words, it would take the last one and you'll go, what's where's the rest of my divs yeah um what was there anything else that you pointed out that we could perhaps get rid of i think it was in oh we're okay yeah i mean i just saw quite a lot of stuff there but um <laughs> apart from the code <laughs> i mean there are some uh, th th there are what is this there is, this is all uh this is all the stuff that we need to do uh this stuff oh is it yeah, wow. Cool. Okay. No one's no one's done that already. Nobody's done what? As in, usually with the more popular React library, someone's done all of that create element stuff for you so that you don't have to. But oh, uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, the the actual uh, you dropping down into wow. no, we're dropping yeah. down into React for because we don't quite know where we can use Reagent and there's a yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So I, I mean. This is why, like, um, when I'm when I'm doing artists, like a lot of the code has started to look like that because yeah. React is too slow or, or whatever. And 
yeah, that's that's when I start thinking it would be nice if I could just write some JavaScript and then call that. But oh, de definitely. I mean, it's it, it it's because it's in flux. It's because the interop surface with um, Slate, you know, Slate is very powerful. It has lots of features yeah. and things, and but it does have a React wrapper itself, and but you know, there's a lot of spinning plates. So rather than trying to solve all the reagent interrupt things as well, sometimes it's better to just drop down into React, even if the code looks nasty. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely faster. Although I say if speed isn't important, then using it, reagents, uh, React interop is, is a, a lot cleaner, and there aren't really many problems. Like, it yeah. usually does do the right thing. Well, I'm happy. I mean, when things work, you can then make changes, and you can say, does it still work? But it's quite good just to not have so many layers going on when you're trying to deal with something as new as Slate. And, you know, this was, we've done a lot of evals of other things like Draft, which is the Facebook content editable and other things. Uh, there's another, um, and it's not easy to find one that actually meets all of your needs uh, there, you, you know, and uh, Slate didn't mm. seem to be, Slate has all the features that kind of, you know, like ability, yeah. to, you know. It, it it's it and it does allow you to break out very easily and say actually I want to put in a my own React component here. It's very and this is what's going on here. It does allow you to put any React component in here. So you can even in this one here and we'll come to it and look like um, like this. Please work. Yeah, like a thing like this. We've still got a um, a vestige in where you can turn it into some code. You know. Code. This is what that's good. So the, yeah. you know, I don't know why I would keep that in, but it's 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 quite a nice uh, it's quite a nice demo of what you can do with Slate and yeah. I mean, writing a, a rich text editor like this is difficult, and uh, it's definitely better to use some library rather than trying to do yeah. it yourself. Yeah, you know, Slate is popular, and they and it's got lots of styles, but it's got lots of users, and lots of people have written about it, and it's quite stable. It's a few years old. But it, it, it is meant to be more of a kit for building a, what did you call it? A content editor? A rich text a rich, editor. Uh, yeah, it's more of... I don't know if that's it, the proper name. It gives you all the control that you need, so it doesn't force you to use your own schema. So we were able to get it to adapt to our data model for how we want our blocks to be, rather than having to sort of be forced to use their schema. And it, that's quite a... A nice thing, but it you know it's um, you pick mm. one of these things and you you move on with your life. Um, yeah, there's a Rome one that I used, which it, it it's a different approach because when you're clicked into the text field, because in Rome text fields it's basically one line, like yeah. you don't have multiple lines. So when you've clicked into one of the lines, it converts it all to plain text. So you have your formatting, you know, like. Um, underscore underscore and then some text and then underscore underscore makes it italics right but yeah when you're actually clicked into that input it turns it into the plain text so you see the underscores and then when you click out again then it rent as the right oh i see what you mean yeah there is a some there, there is something in in um there is a little bit like that in slate habit has yeah but, but in in um in rome you don't see those stars unless you're editing a text Right, got it. Yeah, I, I, that, I actually that I really like. I kind of like that view. You know, for some people don't, but I, I do. But that was the idea behind when you hit this. You not you wouldn't look at this is. Oh, so did that show you the? That italic? would show you the yeah. What is the, the underneath? You know, there was a very popular editor uh, called Word Perfect, um, yeah. which competed for a few years with Word, and it did have a loyal fan base. And one of its things was that on the it had your window was split into two. On the top half, you saw your WYSIWYG, and on your bottom half, you yeah, saw like the codes. ASCII, ASCII doc uh, FX or whatever it is. Just like that, yeah. you know, but it, it you know, then well, Word was sort of, no, everything has to be WYSIWYG, the whole page, and, but actually, it had its fan base because people were very productive, because they, when they wanted something like bold, or they wanted to do a kind of underline, yeah. that is very- You can copy paste. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I think I think uh, Rome's way is like a good medium between the two because if you want to copy and paste it and you just want plain text, yeah, then when you click into it, you see all the stars and the underlines, yeah, your plain text. But when you're reading it, 
and you're you know consuming it you don't have that distracting you so yeah it's got like uh, the ability to do both but without having to double the screen real estate um, yeah which i think is quite nice but uh like notion doesn't do it that way notion just has it in formatted time the whole time and if you type you know your stars and then um then as soon as it's found a bold thing it just removes the stars from you as yeah you get so uh I, I i don't really care either way um but yeah that the slate thing is is fine i guess I, I don't like it when it tries to do you know like uh emacs ascii doc mode that's yeah where oh, it, gosh. it just formats the text but keeps it with all of the symbols yeah and you kind of get <laughs> you know that I find that hard. To yeah, read. that's horrible. I, I mean, yeah, it, I think a, a little bit of playing around with this. I mean, we don't at the moment need it to be product quality. You know, when I get our kind of teams of UX designers to slave over this, we just need to be passable to be able to 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 get to the next step. You know, like there's lots of things that we want to play around with, but one of the things is the um, you know enough yeah, I, a card. You know, yeah, I I wouldn't spend too long on the UI because um yeah like you said you know it's just yeah it's just it, it's going to take you years and years and years if you there is no end of the you know, polish that you can add to it what I, what I do want to do is the mentions though because the mentions are for a graph database yeah you know and links are important. are you are you planning on doing like the Rome style um double square bracket to do oh, I don't know I haven't given it any thought at all that would be a really nice thing to say I, no I haven't but it but I have things in the database, lots of mm. things that I would like to link to, not just other bits of text either. You want to link to users, I want to link up to... Yeah, because uh, so Rome has like different syntax for linking to different things. So you do a double square bracket right. and you type, uh, you know, things or whatever. And then if that, if that thing inside the double square brackets doesn't exist as a document, it creates it. Yeah. Or if it does, then it links to it. Yeah. And then, so if you say, you know, some more double square brackets text here, yeah. then text here is a document that you can click on and you go to that document. And yeah. It will say back references and it will show you like little snippets of all of the other documents that reference that thing. Exactly. But then you also have um, double parentheses for referencing other things and you have the ats for referencing people. And Right, you know. right. I, I mean, yeah, I, I, that, that does have a, um, that, that has a long, what's a tradition of the original wiki, which Ward Cunningham, the C2 wiki, Cunningham and Cunningham, I think it was, um, where you would put, this is why on these, and in fact, it's probably still, you know, it's still a thing, right? This is the original wiki. And so, you see this? And so the idea, yeah. when you typed a title-cased word uh, right, that didn't right. exist, right, then it would, here we are, like, oh, you know, um, then it would assume that that was a stub and just it would yeah. make it exist. and. Uh, you know, and then things grew like this. So sure. there is a, there is. I think the clever thing, though, like about the square brackets, is not the it doing a link from the square brackets. It's that it uh, generates a graph of all of your references yeah. and can do back references, so that when you're on a document that something else references, it right. shows you a list of those things. Right. And I think that's where like the data log stuff is powerful because it's very easy to write those queries. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And that's that's the thing. We are sitting on a database where if you make a link to something, then you can query the backlink. In fact, yeah. you know, it's all indexed. So that is the, I think you, what you've what you hit the nail on the head there. That is really at the very, very heart of what we're trying to do is surface the feeling of a graph into a UI. Uh, and I know we, it then ends up looking like other graph-like products like Notion and things like that. But the, the intention here is to experiment with bringing some of the crux features into, yeah. into the uh, Well, I think there's a reason that Rome used Datomic, right? And um, you know, it's, be it's because it is well suited for it. And then also Rome has like a view where you can see all of your documents as a graph and yeah. use, uh, you know, like some uh, JS library to render all yeah. of your documents and you can physically see the graph and move nodes around and and stuff like that and that's yeah I, that, I mean they're, 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 that I would I'd like to hit I'm not a Rome user I've used it I've used it a couple of times but I wouldn't say I've used it from I've only written yeah. probably four or five notes in it but I, I'd like to know 
what are the things that are particularly useful and what yeah, I, are the gimmicks or what the, you know. I also don't use it since they decided to start charging a ridiculous amount of money for it. And I now use Notion, but then Notion just copied all of, all of the Roam features. Right. So like the square bracket references and the backlinks and all of that sort of thing, Notion just copied that. So uh, yeah. um, I did try Roam the other day just because I was uh, wanting to see how they did how they were doing their real-time updates because I know with Datomic that's hard yeah. and uh, I found out they're not, using, they're not using Datomic. They they throw everything into both Datomic and Firebase and then they use Firebase to do the real-time updates, which is pretty uh, pretty messy. Uh, yeah, I know that, that is messy. Well, they can solve the problem with Datomic at scale. So. Yeah. yeah, well, I, I mean, it, it's... It's an interesting area of research, and it's interesting to know. I would like to know what things that you, if you were building a new notion, what things you would keep, and what features you like, and what features you you wouldn't. You yeah. know, and and um, it's it's a it's a case of uh, yeah. oh, definitely that notion thing about uh, the, the thing about don't want to build something just for one person to use. I mean, for researchers, very useful. They can put all their, their notes in a graph, but. This is more about collaboration and being yes. able to. Yeah, I, I agree. That's important. And I don't think it needs to be as fancy as Notion where you see other people's faces as they hop around the page and that sort of thing. Yeah, right. I don't think, I don't think you need all of that. As long as you can share a link to something and multiple people can go to that link and edit things and you've yeah. got some reasonable level of conflict resolution. I actually think, like, I was thinking about the conflict resolution and I think if you're going to try and solve it yourself, maybe the easiest way is um, when someone is highlighting a text field like that, you lock it. Yeah. Yeah, Jeremy said the same thing. Uh, in fact, Jeremy's quite happy at the granularity of the whole block, to lock the whole yeah. block. And in fact, the, uh, if you read the uh, HTTP specifications, which I'm not suggesting you do, but there, there is a mechanism in HTTP built in to support this very use case because people were originally pushing HTTP as the CMS, you know, and to do read write kind of uh, authoring. WebDAV is really the DAV stands for distributed authoring, that's a conversion. Yeah, I, right? I guess your, your only issue is you still got a conflict if two people select a text block at the same time and then you have to decide who gets it. But it should be pretty clear because you just lock it for one person whoever got there first according to the uh, server and then the other person just gets locked out and it's like oh well i guess i was too well, slow interestingly alex it's done the same way in the http does it the same way as closure does it so it's optimistic logging logging locking so what right what you you get the eat that's what the entity tag allows you to do you get the entity tag of the first version and then you make your change and then you put your change but you know how a, a, an atom gets swapped the the, the the old value is stored is actually when you commit an atom the old value is sent with the new value and the atom compares and say well actually that's not the that old value isn't the right value anymore so I'm yeah. going to you're going to have to retry so that's that's it's done in the same way you get this um, you you do you add a header to your request called if match so you do a put but you say if match and you put the old e tag there and if the e tag has been updated by somebody then you get you get bounced off. It's a four oh nine, and you have it's called conflict, and you have to try it, retry it, or you you know, or you yeah. Or you, and so, I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm saying that the apparatus is already there, and we could so to leverage something that is fairly primitive, it would say, well, mm. sorry, you can't update this because John has updated it. Bad luck. But that's better than you accidentally overwriting John's last kind of edit. So yeah, I I mean I, I don't know if you want to do it at the HTTP level, I think. Well, at least you'd need some way of um, setting the UI so that it's clear what's going on. And you'd also need like it to time out after a while so that yeah. someone can't click on a thing and go to sleep and then... Well, you know, lock I, did, I mean, locking, version control systems used to use locking. Um, yeah. You'd have to ring up somebody in Russia at 2 a.m. because he's, you know, I, Igor has fallen asleep at his keyboard and he's locked the entire repository or something. And, you know, uh, there, there were lots and lots of problems of that nature. So they had the, they invented this thing with optimistic logging, logging um, which allowed you to access things concurrently. And they called it the concurrent versioning system or CVS, which you might know as the forerunner of subversion. So 
these things <laughs> locking locking has got a lot of um, bad press over the years for, for, for yeah for, I, so. I think it's fine if it's at a block level though yeah. and if if you say you know a block is like a paragraph or, or one line and when you press return you get a new block yeah. like that's what notion and Rome do and it doesn't it doesn't look as like uh, broken up as this thing does where yeah. you have borders around each of your your things like it's kind of invisible yeah um, and if someone selects you know that some more text here line and that thing is locked but you can still yeah. edit the other things I, I think I think that's fine I mean, the, the, um, the, the problem is if you've got John sitting there with a cursor and he's flashing and he's just falling asleep right he wouldn't yeah have but that, you time it out yeah, right? time you time it out, it out yeah, yeah. and in fact um, you, you you see when you make an edit the actual the debounce thing I know you know, I make a change and then it saves right it's, yeah, I, you I don't know about that too because I was thinking about that. And what Rome does is they don't do that. Yeah, Rome doesn't do the HTTP request until you press enter or until you move to a different line or you defocus okay. the input. Right. So you can type as much as you want and you can pause and you can wait and you can do some more typing, but it's only when you go to a new block. block so you right. press enter or you press up or you press escape or you you know, you know click somewhere else. You unfocus, yeah, you blur. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you blur. I did it, the original version of this was, the, was done through blur, but um, uh, it, I, just in the coding of it, it just was as easy to do after, a, I mean, J Jeremy came in and he had a different idea and, and then we've kept it ever since. It's, it's, all of this is up for review. You can see how... Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think as it is right now, like you don't have an easy way to jump between blocks and the blocks are like quite oh, yeah. separated from each other. So maybe it does more, make more sense to have it on typing. But um, Well, it, it, yeah, we don't want, I mean, all this stuff is all kind of going to disappear. This will look more like a document. This whole thing, yeah. is it an action or not, was something I put in, but it, it wasn't meant to be a direct thing. It's just a... I mean, yeah, well, Notion has that style of thing where each line of text, if you hover over it, you get like a little dot, dot, dot oh, next yeah. to the block, and then you can do those actions and that sort of thing. Yeah. But you're going to have a lot of uh, fun UI challenges when you try and make blocks not <laughs> look like blocks or behave like blocks because it is it is a difficult thing. And I think yeah. a lot of people don't realize how difficult it is to actually uh, make things behave yeah. when, when you try and. I think it's key, key is to avoid that. I mean, we for, for the foreseeable future that we only want to move up to having a few handful of users where and also the the damage that will be caused by somebody uh overwriting something so you know the, this locking problem isn't actually a hot feature or a you know the the whole i want to collaborative editing things it, it sort of comes in when you've got a more of a product and you, you you've got businesses and customers who don't understand and want you know, they're used to this collaborative thing and they expect it, but that there are so many things that we're playing around with. We don't want to spend too much time just on one thing when there's there's lots and lots of things that we want to play with. I mean, that's a, yeah. it's a, there's a broad set of things to work on. Yeah, I, I think a key, like the key things are that more than one person can update the text and updates happen in real time like without you needing to refresh the page. I think that's important. Yeah. And I think that um, having history, a change history of everything is important. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, we'll have to have a bi-temporal database underneath it, won't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, but on, on that note, I think I have to close the episode because yeah. there, it is t that time. And, and this is the longest ever episode of this live coding experiment, Alex, which um, you know I'm, I'm glad you were part of. So okay. uh, I'm going to stop stop streaming and i'm going to stop recording goodbye everybody thank you for for watching this far if you have and see you next time